Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well and staying healthy out there. I'm happy to have the opportunity to present virtually today and hope that next year I'll be able to meet in person. I look forward to that day. So in today's talk, I'd like to present some work that we've done recently for nickel sputtering. The title of my talk is Sputtering Nickel from a Rotary Cathode as a Replacement for Decorative Electroplating. And this work with, uh, was done in conjunction with, with VaporTech. I look forward to answering any questions at the end of the talk in the live Q&A session. Otherwise, you can email me with any questions you might have. So the outline of my talk, I'll have an introduction and background of the work, look at the experimental, the coating hardware and substrates that we use, go through the process conditions, and then the analysis equipment of the nickel coating that was done at sputtering components. And then we'll look at the results prior to overcoat with chromium. And we used a snap test analysis and a thermal shock test for the nickel. And we'll also look at the nickel coating thickness results. And then we'll also look at the results post chromium coating. So the analysis equipment that was used at VaporTech was SEM and EDS, Rockwell adhesion testing, salt spray corrosion testing, quench test, and then I've got a slide on some future work that we're planning to do. So for the introduction and background, um, obviously there are environmental concerns with electroplating. It's been a, uh, a technique that has been used since the early 19th century. Chrome plating was developed in the early 1920s and nickel plating prior to that. So due to environmental concerns, specifically regarding exposure to hexavalent chrome during the electroplating process, there have been significant efforts over the past few decades to re replace this with this process with cleaner technologies. And PVD has proven to be a simple cost-effective solution. So the coating should have a bright appearance with exceptional corrosion and wear resistance and protect against tarnish. The nickel layer adds smoothness, reflectivity and corrosion protection to the overall coating. And then there's also challenges that we have to address with sputtering magnetic materials. Obviously for a rotary cathode, it's difficult to remove and um, so in, insert and remove the magnet bar from the, from the target um, due to the magnetic material. And so we have a special magnet bar to, to do that. Um, this, the, the, the work really came about from a request from VaporTech to look at replacement for decorative electroplating according to ASTM B456, which is a standard specification for electrode deposited coatings of copper plus nickel plus chromium and nickel plus chromium. A picture up here, by the way, is, is from VaporTech, some of the um, hardware that's, that's coated there. Okay, for the experimental, the, the goals, we had three goals. The first goal was to determine the best static pretreatment and sputtering conditions for adhesion of nickel to brass. Um, we hadn't sputtered nickel onto brass before, so we definitely had some, some challenges. And then to determine the static deposition conditions for DC and also bias sputtering of nickel on brass. Um, as measured by profilometry, we had to achieve greater than, than five micron coating thickness. And then the third goal was to produce samples for customer durability evaluation. And those were the samples that were sent to VaporTech. <clears throat> so the hardware, the first thing on the, the list was the arm bar, which is the air retractable magnet bar. You can see a picture of it here. I shall get the laser pointer. Um, so you can see the arm bar here and the yellow part is actually an air bladder. So when you inflate and deflate the air bladder, that raises and lowers the, the magnet pack. Obviously, um, it moves it away from the, from the, from the target and it's held there. Um, for easy insertion and removal of the magnet bar from the target. So we're able to, to overcome that, those concerns. And then the target was a monolithic nickel target, 99.5% purity, 650 millimeters length, and the OD was 131 millimeters. The, um, we also used our SMN block, which, was, uh, which is, is an externally mounted M block. And then for the power supplies, we had an advanced energy MDX2 bias power supply that was kindly given to us by VaporTech. And then for the cathode power supply, it was an advanced energy MDX pinnacle. For the, the profilometer, we have a profilometer in-house SCI. 
which is a 10 core model 102010. And then the brass samples for coating were supplied by Vapotech with three by three by 0 0.065 inches. When you look at the hardware here, this is in our, our system. This is the nickel target in the coater. So the gas delivery is from the manifold that's directly behind the target to, to the right here. And then the substrate holder is mounted to a rib of the, the drum. You can kind of see the, the edge of the, the, the drum here. It's had the shield removed. Um, and then there's a glass witness slide here that we used to do profilometer measurements and then a ceramic tile here to isolate the samples. Then the bias, of, the bias uh, power supply was, was connected to the top of the rear of the, the bar behind um, the, the samples. So for experimental A, the first experimental series, um, as I mentioned, was to determine minimum pretreatment conditions for good adhesion of sputtered nickel to the brass samples. Um, we did many experiments. And we also tried sprayed and monolithic uh, targets, and we determined the monolithic target gave the better results. Um, we'd also tried pretreatment with uh, one of our pretreatment sources, um, and then varying substrate bias, changing pressure, et cetera, um, to try and find that, that optimal window. Um, by the way, the target to substrate distance in all these experiments was 110 millimeters. Um, so we varied the time and the cathode power during high pressure pretreatment. So that was 25 millitor and then minus 300 volts on the bias. Um, and then we originally tried to perform the step with just the bias, but uh, we couldn't repeatedly ignite a plasma with those conditions. And so we added a, a we found that this low level of cathode power, just 100 watts was necessary to, to ignite the bias plasma. And then um, we used the, the glass substrate as I mentioned, for the profilometer measurements, but we really focused on the on the brass adhesion only. We really learned that adhesion to the glass um, didn't really predict or always correlate with the adhesion to, to brass. So for the second set of experiments was targeting the coating thickness in the range of four to six microns for durability evaluation. Um, we, we mapped out an optimal window of deposition power and time that was required to maintain good adhesion. And um, we don't currently have the option to provide substrate cooling or substrate rotation with a bias. And so um, we had to carefully explore the power and time space for, for the conditions that would maintain adhesion. So thermal management was very important. Um, we determined the profilometry results on the glass slide was equivalent to the, to the brass sample. And once that was determined, we emitted the profilometry tape and measurement on the brass sample because sometimes the sample wouldn't survive the thermal challenge during deposition. And we determined um, energy delivery was not a predictor of optimal of, of an optimal operating window, but it was a reliable predictor of de deposited thickness. Uh, we used in the end uh, five kilowatts and, and found that higher than five kilowatts, we had delamination. So for the final process conditions, the pretreatment was 750 SCCMs of argon, 20 millitor, 0.1 kilowatts cathode power, and minus 300 volts substrate bias for two minutes. And then for the nickel deposition, we used 280 SCCM argon, two millitor, five kilowatts cathode power, the same substrate bias, and we varied the deposition time to, to get that four to six microns uh, nickel thickness. And it's, it's important to note actually that the sample wasn't moved, <coughs> moved or the, the chamber vented after pretreatment. So we went straight from pretreatment to nickel deposition. Okay, let's look at the, the snap and the thermal shock test results. For the snap test, this was done by applying 3M610 adhesive tape and pulling it off rapidly. And you can see that the, the four of the samples here, in fact, all, all of the samples um, survived the test. For the thermal shock test, which was a minute immersion in boiling water and then a minute immersion in ice water, um, the sample, uh, so yeah, we actually did that twice. Um, and you can see that the sample also survived our thermal shock test. For the thickness results, the graph here is thickness versus kilowatt minute of total power. You can see there's a, a linear correlation here. You increase the power and, and you increase the thickness, which is what we expected 
and we included the 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 curve there which was um deposition without bias just for just for reference and we did we, we do suspect that we had an estimated around 10.5 nanometers contribution from the from the pre-treatment using that 100 watts of, of cathode power so it was very very minimal there these are the samples that were sent to vapor tech and the deposition time was 16 to 24 minutes which translated into deposition rate of between 80 and 120 kilowatts per minute and then we we achieved our target thickness of, of four five and six microns So these are a picture of the, the samples. Um, we did have on this sample in the, in the top left, there was one small delamination spot here. And we actually repeated the snap tape test on that sample and it didn't delaminate further when it was tested in the, in the area adjacent. Um, then there's a sample here, all the other samples look the same. The sample here, um, this little mark here was just shading from the, from the clamp rather than any delamination. This is the analysis equipment that was used at VaporTech. The, uh, as I mentioned, um, I just put the specifications here, the SEM and EDS analysis, uh, Rockwell adhesion, that's the equipment used there, and then the salts break corrosion testing according to um, ASTM B117 and quench test according to ASTM B571 paragraph nine. I just made some notes here for the, for the chromium testing. So the samples that were tested at, at, at VaporTech had uh, chrome, chromium, uh, had a chromium overcoat. So they took one four micron sample, four micron thick nickel sample, and then one six micron thick nickel sample. And then they had a control sample of seven microns thick. Um, and they were all coated with around 250 to 300 nanometers of, of chromium. So as I mentioned, here, yeah, they, they, were, they were coated with, with uh, 250 to 300 nanometers of chromium. It's by cathodic arc. You can see one of the coating systems here from VaporTech. Each sample was cut into four sections. So on one section, there was SEM and EDS analysis and Rockwell adhesion analysis. And then another section had um, salt spray corrosion testing. And the uh, third section had um, quench test completed. Here are the procedures for the SEM and EDS. You can, you can uh, read through those here, um, but pretty standard proce procedures. For the cross-section photos, um, the samples were sectioned and fractured via liquid nitrogen soak. And also um, the accelerating voltage was five kilo kilovolts for the Rockwell adhesion test photos, then the accelerating voltage was a little higher, and also for the EDS, it was a little higher, 15 kilovolts. Working distance in all cases was 10 millimeters. For the Rockwell adhesion test, the load was 150 kilogram force, and after testing, the area was taped and removed to, to, to remove any loose debri debris, and then um, the sample was analyzed under the SEM. For the salt spray test procedures, is the the parameters here, it was a 24 hour test, 49.6 degrees C. Um, you can see the other, other parameters there. Before testing, the, the samples were actually cut, um, the, sorry, the cut edges of the samples were actually painted and that reduced any galvanic corrosion between the substrate and the coating. And then once the test was over, the samples were rinsed with deionized water and blown dry and then evaluated via CSA criteria. <clears throat> The quench test procedures, the samples were heated at 250 degrees C for an hour and then submerged in 20 degrees C water and the coupons evaluated for delamination. Looking at the results here for the SEM and for the SEM results, the sample on the left is the six micron thick nickel layer with the chromium overcoat. And on the right is the four micron thick nickel layer before chromium coating. As, as, as I said, the samples have been fractured with liquid nitrogen, um, showing a pretty typical sputtered film with, with dense columnar growth, growth. You can see the um, scale here. This is, a, this is a micron, and then this is a micron. For the EDS of oh, the control, um, 
showed more of a, a ductile fracture. Um, that was the uh, cathodic arc coating. The EDS uh, shows the results for the K lines of each element and just confirms the, the thickness of the coating and the, and the presence of those, those elements. This is the six micron thick net nickel layer. And then for the control, um, you can see here a picture of the, the coating and then um, presence of carbon and oxygen, the chromium layer here uh, on, the on the top and then the thicker nickel layer. For the Rockwell adhesion, this was more really of a, a, a qualitative qualitative test rather than a quantitative test. And uh, again, the sample on the right, the left is the four micron and the right is the six micron. And it's clear that the six micron showed better adhesion. But the control sample um, is pretty interesting picture, pretty cool picture here. Um, you can see the cracks um, uh, on, on the picture and that might be due to more stress in the film from the chromium, but there's a clear difference between the mode of failure for the control versus the sputtered films. Um, all samples really exhibited good adhesion and you can see the white area here and that's probably nickel delaminating slightly from the brass, but they all, they all passed the test. For the salt spray test, um, the, this paint here, by the way, is just where it peeled after the, after the test. Um, after, after washing it off with water, it was, it was in place during the test. Um, the CSA requirements for the plumbing industry are one to two pits per inch and less than 0.8 millimeters diameter. So it's clear that this four micron sample failed because there were significant individual pits. For the six micron sample, this passed, there were maybe one or two individual pits. Um, and also some defects might've been on the sample um, beforehand as well. For the control that passed, there was no corrosion. For the quench test, um, all samples passed and there were no signs of coating delamination. So for, for future work, we'd like to repeat the nickel sputter coating um, that, we, that we did already, and, but replace the cathodic arc chromium coating with sputter chromium. We're gonna set up the, the system in our, our chamber to do that. We didn't have um, the ability to do that before, but we can, we can do the, those coatings now. Um, so we'll evaluate sputtered um, nickel and chromium, and then do a viability study because obviously the PVD method has to be comparable to plating for commercial applications. So we have to evaluate the throughput and, and cost of that process. Thank you for listening, and thanks very much to VaporTech for the analysis results. And we see the names of everybody that was involved here with the with the work, and um, I'll take any questions. Thanks. <laughs>